Andy Warhol is hailed as one of the most famous artists in modern art history. But what did he really do? How does his art, his craft, his vision impact the context of art history? What meaning does his legacy have on the role of future artists? How does his work measure up to more traditional classical artworks? Within the context of popular modern art, pop artists like Lichtenstein of his time and in the expressionism of Pollock and Dolly, which made waves a little before him. There was abstraction and narrative, and although controversial, Andy's work at first glance may confuse any traditional audience. What are these copied logos and repetitive images that he used in his art? And how is his art compared to the narrative and techniques employed by classic artists, even if we do deem it pop art? Warhol's genius of vision was his realization that in an age of consumerism, anything could be turned into a commodity. Anything could be made to fit into the paradigm of museum-quality art. His approach, using commercial screen production techniques to mass-produce his art. His technique, informing and informed by the mass-produced images all around us. If you're not sure why this is so profound, consider that massive screen printing techniques were never used by another artist before him, and he was considered as famous as a tabloid celebrity today, an artist as popular as an actor or director today. Today, his works are sold at auctions for $39 million, and at one point in his career, simple Polaroid shots converted to screen prints were commissioned for over $40,000. Part of selling himself and this art was making his persona and crafting his celebrity status himself. That whole persona, at least as seen in the public eye, was cold, disingenuous, or impersonal, and many view his work as having the same emotionless quality. Mechanical, commercial, repetitive, detached. And this is his statement about who we are as a culture, where seeing visions of disasters, celebrities, the idea of stardom, are commonplace and within the collective consciousness. The media images, advertisement, and products that surround us are mass-produced. He shows us that we choose to see what's beneath the surface, asking what effect this repetition has on us perhaps bringing us to common ground, the artist and the audience as one. Everything can be art. Everyone can be an artist. Today, more than ever, we live in a world of repetition and mass production. Films are even being remade to perhaps support some notion of nostalgia. Perhaps more than ever, we're seeing how culturally we rely on repetition. We're comforted by repetition. To see the old rehashed again, a shared comfort to know that there's an abundance of the same. We see the conversation that Warhol started continue today where the general public, consumers, have access to state-of-the-art design tools like Adobe Creative Suite, programs which are used by industry professionals today. Yet many artists replicate, and trends are encouraged by YouTubers, for instance, who mix and match found materials and create conversations together. Instagrammers and modern video artists accessing and defining social consciousness in the same way Warhol used the photography, 16mm film, and screen printing technologies of his day. In that sense, one can argue that all artists, anyone who creates with new media today, are kindred spirits with Andy Warhol. And the final question remains, what limits can you push as an artist? Perhaps by shaping yourself, crafting your own persona, you have the potential to splash into the modern art world. Perhaps we're all succumb to a new phase of visionaries and visions. 
We'll find out who we are as a collective civilization and what we value. What profound new realizations will be made by multimedia pioneers like Andy Warhol within the modern art conversation of today.